everybody, my name is Carlos Garcia, and I'm an actor, writer, podcaster, and of course, the reason you're here, a stand-up comedian. And a lot of people ask me, why am I a writer? And it's simple, because I felt like I had something to say that other people weren't saying. And why am I a comedian? Also simple, because I found out that I could make people laugh by writing down the things I say. It's a great combination. Plus, there really is a very powerful feeling that comes from making people laugh. You know, maybe someone's having a bad day or a rough moment in life, but with comedy, you can help take their mind off of it, even if it's just for a few minutes. One of the best things that you can do to get started in comedy is to just watch other comedians do their thing. Trust me, you'll get so many nuggets of ideas just from watching other people do it. And no, that doesn't mean steal their act. Come up with your own. But see how other people have done things. Get ideas with costume. Get ideas with punchlines. Get ideas with types of comedy. And trust me, you'll be a lot better of a comedian for it. So I had to go buy new shoes with harder soles. And when I was trying on shoes, I realized when we try on shoes, we do things we're never going to do in them. We stand up. These are good. These are good. These, if I have to do that, that's good. These, these are good. I like these. Uh huh. That's good. If I have to do that, that'll be good. These are good if I have to do this. Bye, <laughs> Yep, I like these. I'm gonna get these. Love it. This is my long, luxurious blonde hair. <laughs> Ain't it pretty? Yeah. I could put it in a ponytail one and see. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> you do? Yeah. Okay, let me get off my shoulder, wait. See, look, see? And look, now it's in my eyes. And my mother made me go to my room because she said it's one number of shirt on my hair. And I said, nah-uh, this is my long, luxurious blonde hair. And she said, nah-uh, fool, that's a shirt. And I said, you a fool, this is my hair. And she made me go to my room. But I don't care, because when I get big, I'm going to get 50 million, 20 million, million elephants, and I'm letting them go in the house so they can trample on everybody. And then she's going to want me to make them stop, but she ain't even going to know I'm there, because I'm going to have blonde hair, blue eyes, and I'm going to be white. I am. So a joke is very simple to write, because it always has two parts. Setup, punchline. Every joke always has that, no matter how long and short it is. So basically... What did the chicken cross the road? It's a setup. The funny part that comes at the end of it is the punchline. It's as simple as that. Let's give you guys about five to seven minutes for you guys to come up with some jokes yourself and see you know, what, what works. And maybe we'll find a funny premise here that you can start developing for next time. Do something that's authentic to you. Is there anything you want to talk about? And note, Set the bar extremely low. My first show ever, my goal was I want to make one guy laugh at one thing I say. That's it. It was like a seven, eight minute set. So it's a long time talking. And literally it was like, okay, if I can get a guy to chuckle, I'll come back next week. <laughs> you guys have come up with yourselves you know how uh, during a pandemic we have we do appointment twice for for vaccine because it's three or four weeks apart and so so my two jokes about life after uh, virus is over uh, after coronavirus so after coronavirus you go to your regular uh, doctor for a regular checkup and then he said 
you know, I need blood test. And then you come out and you make two appointments for blood test, which is not needed. You understand why? Yeah. It's true. Yeah. So that one. Uh, not, not very funny, but that's what I thought about. Now here's the thing that, like you said, there's something there. I, right. I would take with that joke is take that joke and then embellish that. So it's not just the two blood tests, it's two of everything at this point. You know what I mean? So see what else you can add two of to make okay. it as silly and just out there as you can and keep going with it, you know, and keep and going. Maybe say th three weeks apart or something so people understand what I'm referring to. Yes, yes, exactly. Right. Yeah. I have to work with it. And, so and then it's about uh, after coronavirus again, it's square dance. It also needs improvement. So the square dancing will, uh, after coronavirus, it will be held at, uh, at the soccer field because <laughs> each square side would be six feet. <laughs> That's a good one on its own. I love that one. I love the visual of the soccer field. It's massive. And you see, it's, it kind of goes off of what I'm saying with the last joke. You kind of, you went big and it's, and it's a silly concept. If you think about it, you're just going to square it, but it's great. It's excellent. I love that one. I think you definitely, that's a, that's a keeper right there. And note the, I love the premise of the last one too. So keep working on that one. You got two golden ones though. That's a good start. Yeah, Alvin, you want to share your joke? Being that I'm in the um, um, Department of Education system, mm -hmm. and then I'll and then I'll share another one that I just I just put together now. Uh, so the first one is uh, so people have been asking what is online remote learning. It's where students leave to go to the bathroom whenever they want and return two to three days later. <laughs> That's good. And that's one that I would say, give similar advice to Marina, see what you can even add to that off the cuff, not, not necessarily even write it, written into the joke, but see where else you can take that. You know, what else do they do? You know, like maybe the guy, there's a kid eating a sandwich while you're trying to teach, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's like, what? Like, how is that the life of a teacher now? You know, there's so many avenues you can take that. So I love remote learning, it's a great one. Yeah, there's a lot of silence in uh, remote learning. That's the issue with, you know, that we're having where students are very quiet and silent. Say they're going to go to the bathroom and we don't hear from them for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this one, I, this one I, I wrote now, uh, it's probably not as funny if the other one was funny. Um, after, after we had family over for Thanksgiving two years ago, they haven't stopped raving over my cookie, and my mother-in-law promised to visit much more regularly. Hmm. But then came something called social distancing. I love that. That's very relatable. And actually, you should give yourself credit. The fact you just wrote that—that's a good joke there too. And there's an and another avenue that you can run with, you know. And then you can write a couple more jokes about the family and what it is that they annoy you. And so that you can, because that's really the beauty of comedy is that you, you have one bit that can lead to two or three. And I revisit old bits all the time. And it's like, what can I add to this? Or maybe something pops up that I can layer on. And it's a great segue into something else that I'm talking about. All right, anybody else got another one for me? I did, I did start uh, sort of workshopping something about Subway sandwiches. Uh, and their sandwich is not actually being a foot long and something with the subway train, but it got a little convoluted. See, well then I- I can help you out with that. Wait, wait. So I live in Brooklyn, right? And the G train, much like a subway oh, sandwich, yeah. <laughs> is not quite the full length of the platform. Mm -hmm. Ooh, see that. That's, a, that, 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 that's good. <laughs> that's good. And honestly, my word of advice with anything like that is don't overthink it. And that's the beauty of premises, which is why I say, don't discard that, sit on it. There's, I literally, and now that I'm sitting with my screen shared, and that's literally me, okay, that's awkward. Um, I'll show you guys a folder that I have. I have a folder that's, it's called my bit folder. And I literally have, at this point, 
you see 357 random premises in here that I think that there's something there and I don't know exactly what it is yet. And what I do is I'll go through these when I have a spare time and literally you can see some of these go during quarantine, especially there's a lot of ideas. You know, I go through these when I have a minute and I start going through, it's like, okay, what can I do with these? Uh, what can I turn these into bits? And sometimes the idea will come, you know, creativity is the kind of thing that you shouldn't force it. If you do, you're not gonna get your best work anyways, you know? Come up with the premise, put it down, walk away for a little bit. Come back, you'll have the idea. So Subway, I, I, I love the way Rachel took it. There's a lot of different avenues. There's a lot of different ways you can make fun of Subway. Um, from the Jared Fogle scandal, if you wanna go there to, their products are not even like real. Like most of it is pork based. Yeah, so it's like turkey pork. What? Like that's how is that? That's not a thing that doesn't, there's plenty of ways you can make fun of it. There's a lot of wacky things you can do. Uh, and think about different chains, McDonald's, Starbucks, different, take it further and go. And then you can have basically a good three to five minute set on just restaurants. And with that being said, I mean, I think we're kind of getting there. Uh, like Rachel said, the class will be starting April 17th. It's gonna be Wednesdays and Saturdays. Um, we're gonna basically, the Wednesday will be evening, Saturdays it'll be uh, like I believe at 11 a.m. And uh, basically we'll go over different steps because writing is one side of stand-up, performing is another side of it, uh, getting booked, learning to come up with material, dealing with anxiety on stage, creating characters. There's very many different layers to the business side of it, to performing, to everything. So we're going to go through it all. Uh, we'll have plenty of time. We'll have 60 to 90 minutes each time. We'll, we'll be writing jokes too. And at the end of it all, we're going to have our very own virtual open mic. And you guys will have a five minute set that you'll get to share. And, you know, basically by the end of the class, you should have your own set and you should be able to get started into at least getting booked on some Zoom shows. Keep writing, seriously. There, I've heard a lot of great stuff. And you came up with this stuff mostly in like 10 minutes, you guys. So before my first open mic, I sat on material for weeks and weeks and weeks before I was brave enough to try it. So give yourselves a pat on the back. You started off way better than I did. Keep going. Right? This is just the first step. Whether, whether you take my class or not, which I hope you do, keep going. It's honestly the best thing I ever did was get into this world. Whether you want to be on SNL or you just want to do an open mic, trust me, you'll feel great about being able to put your life experiences into words, being able to laugh about it. Because at the end of the day, we all need to laugh.